next, continuing on the theme, we have Karen Duff Duffy. Duff is the author of a New York Times bestselling memoir, Model Patient. She's a producer, actress, and former MTV VJ, has written for the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Oprah Magazine, and her most recent book is Wise Up, Irreverent Enlightenment from a Mother Who's Been Through It. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Duff. Hello, beautiful people. Um, I'm like Carrot Top, I'm a prop storyteller because I've got to talk about red hot love behind closed doors and I have to do it in eight minutes. So I asked a friend of mine who's well versed in ripping yarns and roaring bon mots, and he said, Duff, it's a cinch, I got a great idea. You just get the spiciest candy you can, put it in your pie hole, start talking, and then when the, when the spiciness dissipates, hey presto, the story's done. So I practiced with, uh, these are fireball atomic jawbreakers, hot tamales, red hots, I've got some Tabasco flavored marshmallow peeps. But elocution is an important part of storytelling. And I thought, well, what about you beautiful people here at Joe's Pub? Your ears have been working, but your mouths have been sitting there like a gob. So, I thought, why don't you take the red hot fireballs, if you'd like, and I put them on the table, but if anyone wants some, I can pass them around, because I'm talking about love, and I love words, like jawbreaker, pickle, schnoz. I love that the English alphabet has just 26 paltry letters. It's a measly allotment, but look what we can do with them. I mean, you put a few words together, you get old yeller, which may get some cortisol leaking. Or if I say hatchet murderer, well maybe I jimmied up a little bit of adrenaline. What about love? What does love do to us? It's four words, four letters, strung together, but what does it mean? I love the New York Knicks. I love my jackasses. I love time alone with a book. I love my family. My son's face is my favorite view on earth. That's a lot of love, a lot of meaning, but just one word. So when I'm looking for wisdom, I like to go to the ancient Greeks. The Greeks had a much more refined taxonomy. I mean, we lump it together. It's like putting together the Carolina Reaper, the ghost, the devil tongue, the sweet bell, calling them all peppers. It's how we're looping together love. So what I love about the Greeks is that they have six refined definitions. Eros is the god of fertility. Now, it was worrying to the Greeks. Eros was not some cute, chubby, little Cupid shooting arrows. It was about a loss of control, and that was, again, destabilizing. It is erotic passion that will lead you to kisses that are so intoxicating your eyes will roll to the back of your head and you will glimpse your own brain. Your glands will shoot a rocket to your nethers and you will be helpless because this is erotic love. Robin Williams said that God gave man one brain and one penis, but only enough blood to run one at a time. <laughs> so, my first true love, my first romantic love, was with the heavy metal singer, who was a one-man conga line of fun. I mean, he was a good time Charlie for two lifetimes, which was really impressive considering the heroic amounts of alcohol that he consumed every night. 
One night after a gig, Wit comes stumbling home, and you know how Charles Schultz drew pig pen with the stink lines rating out? Yeah, that was Wit just with loudmouth soup. He was just constantly a perfume of booze. So he walked in and dives on me on the sofa, and in a clammy embrace, he's like, ah, baby, I love you. And I said, you know, that's really nice, Wit. But I noticed you say you love me when you're hammered. You never say it when you're normal. And he thought about it for a second, and he said, well, maybe normally you're not that cool. <laughs> Which, the hilarity of that statement, I just stayed with Wit way too long. There's another big reason I stayed with Wit too long, but again, we'll keep that behind closed doors. But uh, Wit was just crazy, and I loved him, but I didn't know how I loved him. Second type of Greek love is ludos, and ludos is the joyful, playful, barrel of monkeys, flirty type of love, which I think falls in line with what I had with wit. The third type of love is philia, which is friendship, brotherhood, brotherly love. It's amazing that our friendships, our deep, deep bonds of friendship, they will endure probably longer than any other relationship we have. And yet there's no so social construct, there's no domestic partnership, or marriage. The beautiful thing about friendship is that it's voluntary. I love, uh, a friend of mine said, you know, friendship is weird. I mean, you just pick a human, and you're like, I like this one. <laughs> and then you just start doing stuff with them. I like that one too. And uh, so I love this idea that they're opening my heart to many more types of love. Uh, so we've got eros, ludos, philos. We have pragma. Pragmatic love is more familial. There's a commitment. It's a relationship between a parent and a child can be pragma love. Philatulia is more, it's self-love. But get your mind out of the gutter. It's more about... <laughs> Friendliness towards yourself. When you have happiness in your heart, you have more happiness to share. And then, agape. And agape is truly the most virtuous of love. And it's the love for all. Love for all creatures, mankind, and it is a selfless, noble love. So I'm so grateful for the ancient Greeks to open up my vocabulary, my understanding of love. And as the spiciness may be wearing thin, just want to actually give a tip of the hat to Plato. You know, we think of Plato really as platonic love, meaning no boning, no commingling <laughs> of the sexy nectars. And I think, I really like the cut of Plato's jib. And, you know, he should be actually recognized, not just for no boning. Let's honor him for starting the firing pistol at the beginning of Western philosophy. And let's not think of him as what we do behind closed doors. So cheers. Thanks. Thanks.